Okay. Uh, so it'd be good for somebody to uh, lead in prayer, please. And then we can move forward. Anybody? Uh, Abhinash, can you pray? Uh, yes, sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, beautiful morning and beautiful time, Father God. In the fellowship, in your presence, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for this wonderful opportunity that you've given again into our life, Father God. Thank you for the breath that you are giving, Lord Jesus, again and again, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we pray that, Lord Jesus, as we are, Lord Jesus, learning your word, Father God, understanding prophetic ministry, Father God. We ask you the more revelation and the clear, Father God, so that we can understand in a deeper way, Father God, so, so that we can understand in a new revelation way, Jesus. We ask you, Father God, more of your grace to learn and understand, Father God. We submit Pastor Nancy into your mighty hand, Father God, as she is teaching us, Father God, give her a more revelation and the wisdom and the knowledge so that he could... <coughs> impart in he could impart lord jesus that word and the understanding in our life thank you jesus we praise you we worship you lord jesus we give you all the glory and honor and we ask this pray in jesus mighty name amen thank you ma'am thank you amen amen thank you thank you abhinash so uh today we i remember telling us that we will go into a practice session so that's what we are going to do i thought we could uh, touch upon one chapter and then you know the rest of the class time we will spend praying and sharing words that we hear from god so we can do that and tomorrow again uh, uh, let's see how it goes uh, we have a few more chapters left uh, and i'm hoping to complete it if we can complete it quickly then you know we'll have a little more time for uh, sharing words from god so uh today chapter 14 uh this is the prophetic church it's uh it's going to be somewhat quick so you know we can complete it uh, basically this talks about us as local churches becoming prophetic and pursuing the prophetic anointing uh you know, in what, what God is releasing through us. And so far, we've seen that uh, the prophetic means to hear from God and to speak that forth. So basically, we hear from God about what he's saying in the now. Uh, and, you know, that that brings instruction, that brings the refreshing from God's presence. Uh, it It is not just about saying what God says, but it's more about knowing the heart of God for a time such as this and for the now uh, for us as well as the, the world around us. So you know, that is that is what uh, being prophetic means. And when you think about the prophetic church, then we see that the pastor uh, is prophetic, the people are prophetic, and uh, you know, you, you kind of understand that at a larger scale. So everyone is hearing from God. Everyone um, is flowing with what is in God's heart uh, at an individual and at a corporate level. So as the as we have said earlier, we are tending more and more towards, you know, the release of the supernatural uh, from God's presence. As we uh, await the return of the Lord Jesus, we are seeing much of this restored back to the church. Uh, the fivefold ministry offices are being restored and the anointing of these fivefold ministry offices is also being restored. So the prophetic uh, in a great way is being restored back to the church. Now, while we talk about hearing from God, I think even in the last class, I mentioned that we should move away from making this about getting information from God. So if that becomes the mindset of God's people regarding the prophetic, you know, we would really have failed in uh, understanding the prophetic. You know, and your publication here is titled Understanding the Prophetic. So the prophetic is more than getting information from God. So the prophetic is to flow with the heart of God. So that is what the prophetic really is. Uh, and for us, when we are thinking about a prophetic church and a prophetic congregation, we must have this very, very clear. So the pursuit of the church or the body must be knowing God's heart. And we've also said that the prophetic is all about 
being intimate with god uh, having a strong prayer life being sensitive to the spirit of god so uh, the emphasis is to know god's heart and to pursue intimacy with god okay now added to that we could uh, say that the pursuit of holiness is also important so when we combine all this you know, understanding god's heart we said uh, pursuing intimacy with god and pursuing holiness you know, we can display and reveal the prophetic anointing for you know what god really wants it to be and uh, that is important for us to settle in our hearts why should a church become a prophetic church see uh, it's good as we discussed this in some of our previous courses as well it's good to know god's word preach god's word because god's word is the truth and we know that god's word is always uh, powerful it is able to work in people's lives uh, and with everything you know, that we study and understand from god's word we reap benefits so that is that is understood however you know there is something about the now word of god and the bible says this you know, that the sheep hear my voice so we are following the instructions of the shepherd he is guiding us leading us uh, he is directing us so we have to tune into that regular guidance from god uh, and thereby it is important for us to know the truth um, which he is speaking right now as well so uh, just as much as we might rejoice in what god has spoken 10 years from now 20 years from now 50 years from now uh, you know there there is really a, a place where Uh, or uh, you know there there is really this opportunity that god has given us to keep hearing from him right now so why stay with only the the revelation that has come you know several years ago when god can talk to us right now so that is our purpose we want to hear from god in the now because he is a speaking god so that way we will be instructed by the spirit right now and directed by the spirit right now and you know we can keep walking with the lord so that is the process uh, and i see a hand raised by kennedy kennedy you have something to say okay kennedy did you have a question Or maybe it happened by mistake. No, not it was by mistake. Sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry. okay, no problem. Yeah, that's okay. Sure. All right. So then we move forward. Um, the process of becoming a prophetic church. Now, local churches, as we said, you know, God is pouring out His Spirit, and we are learning more about um, uh, the fivefold ministry offices and the anointings connected to that. So there is a transition. the churches that are not used to the prophetic anointing uh, would need to make a transition into um, hearing from god so there is a process involved and uh, uh, you know how how is this process going to come through by equipping obviously you know, when we learn about the prophetic when we understand how god speaks and then you know people are trained to release the prophetic through their lives that's when they can be positioned uh, to position in a place where uh, they can speak what god is saying right now so this entire process has to take place now what can be uh, an issue here a resistance to change okay so sometimes as god's people and as local churches we become very comfortable with what god is doing uh right now if he is taking us into you know, something new um maybe a large proportion of the church doesn't want that to happen a large proportion of the church uh, um is actively resisting you know what the the pastor is trying to bring in so resistance is a challenge that we might face from a local church congregation 
Uh, and also there can be a fear based on uh, what has been observed as prophetic ministry and anointing. You know, people can have this fear that, oh, we will have a certain reputation. So, you know, what if people start looking at us as, uh, you know, those who uh, flow in the gifts of the spirit, those who prophesy um, and, you know, people have their mindset. So they think then people might, you know, other churches might think that we are weird. Other churches might think that, you know, um, we we are not strong in the world. So all these mindsets, maybe because they don't know God's word clearly yet, you know, they, they think that their reputation will be at stake. So these are some of the challenges that a pastor or a leadership team in a church can face when they want to help the church transition into the uh, uh, into being more prophetic. So we will then need to work with the people. We will then need to teach from scripture, help them understand that you know, this transition is, is definitely scriptural and this is something that God is doing right now. And so we must be open to the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so in that way, by working with the people, um, uh, informing them, educating them, we will be able to overcome the resistance and the fears about their reputation. Okay, uh, so what are some of the pitfalls or the dangers of becoming a prophetic church? Uh, if people are not equipped thoroughly, they could go into this mode of... Um, thinking that the prophetic is just, you know, hear from God and say something, say, speak something nice uh, and, you know, not really be sensitive to the heart of God. So we'll have to help people you know, recognize that, hey, you know, don't just, don't just go around saying things, uh, you know, uh, that, you're, you're not very clear about or uh, without without pursuing intimacy, without pursuing holiness, you know, people can, the entire congregation can go into this mode of just receiving information and giving information. So that's not really the point. They We have to help the church know that our, um, uh, you know, our, the key here or the goal is to really be a blessing to the body of Christ and to um, know the direction that God is providing to his people. So that's the whole goal and the uh, emphasis. So going, uh, trying to do something lesser than that, which is you know, hearing something and saying that out, you know, that, that is not fulfilling God's plan for uh, being a prophetic church. So we'll have to help the church understand that. Then the other thing is that uh, people can start deriving their identity from the function of the church. So then people could uh, identify themselves as, oh, we are a prophetic church. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a prophetic church. There's nothing wrong with being a supernatural church. But these are all parts you know, of uh, um, what is God, what God is doing through the church. So that's not the whole. Uh, and therefore, establishing the identity of the congregation in who they are in Christ Jesus is very, very important. Otherwise, you know, you, the, the congregation just thinks, oh, we are a prophetic church. We are an apostolic church. That alone is our identity. And that uh, is is that can be very dangerous. Okay, So uh, that is also something for us to be careful about. And the next thing is that even if we are able to transition uh, successfully into becoming a prophetic church, we need to let the people know that our being prophetic is for the entire body to be blessed. So there's no point starting to discriminate you know, against churches that are not yet flowing in the prophetic. This also tends to happen. You know, the churches that um, are now flowing in the prophetic look at others and say, oh, we are better than you. God's spirit is moving in our midst. You still don't know how to hear from God. So you see that again is defeating the entire purpose. The prophetic is to bless the body. So we must, um, yeah, thank God for what we are learning. Thank God for what we know. But, excuse me, 
we are not here to put down those who have not yet understood what god is doing through the prophetic or there can be people with differing opinions okay but we need to learn to deal gently with with them uh, uh unfortunately there are clashes there are competitions and you know, there are arguments uh between those who flow in the gifts of the spirit and those who don't want to flow in the gifts of the spirit you know when we when we go into that mode again it's it's causing more harm to the body of christ than uh you know being a benefit so we have to um, stay away from such things now what will happen if a church becomes more prophetic um many benefits we will know how god is steering us through the current times um and uh, uh, another thing is there is refreshing as you hear from god's word the fresh manner of god's word what god is saying in the now that there is a refreshing that comes into the church and we can expect growth advancement um you know uh, being uh, given by the holy spirit so uh, that is helpful and you know we we can be a dynamic a church we can be a church that truly demonstrates the power of the spirit okay now talking a little bit about a pastor who is pastoring a church into this transition uh it is going to be challenging you know, for a, a pastor we already said that there can be a resistance which the pastor would need to work through and the best way is to teach the word so whenever we teach the word the spirit of god will work with the word and work in the hearts of the people and they'll understand the importance of becoming prophetic the next challenge that we would we can expect is that the way a church functions can become somewhat messy okay by that we mean that there can be many good and sincere believers who are practicing to hear from god and so uh we might keep receiving prophetic words every now and then you know believers giving other believers prophetic words and maybe sometimes they go wrong uh, or uh, believers giving the pastor a prophetic word and you know they're all well meaning believers they're all trying to hear accurately from god so which is great but then you see in the flow of the prophetic and the uh you know becoming more accurate there can be all these we wouldn't again i already mentioned you know we wouldn't call uh, this false prophecy because you know these are good people they they are believers they really want to flow in the gifts of the spirit but mistakes okay, mistakes tend to happen so for a pastor to uh, keep encouraging the people guiding them and then you know telling them okay you know good you know good try but uh, uh come on let me teach you some more uh, of god's word and to guide them on how you can interpret what you are hearing so all this will be a part of what a pastor needs to do uh, so it will be so added to the existing work you could say there's additional work to do you know when one wants to uh, transition the church into being more prophetic however you know proverbs uh, 14 verse 4 it says where no oxen are the trough is clean but much increase comes by the strength of an ox so whenever we are wanting to make progress things will be messy around us because yeah it's just part of the process but one needs to be open to accommodate all this uh, chaos uh, in order to help the church transition Uh, so that is one thing about the congregation now a pastor another important aspect for this pastor is to become a prophetic pastor okay so prophetic pastor is uh, instead of just sharing what you know one knows as okay uh, now i'm a pastor i'm only going to teach from these subjects this is the way i'm going to do church but when a pastor starts to hear from god and uh, listen to what the spirit is saying in the now there can be um uh, you know that fresh direction that 
is coming in into the pastor's life so there can be new things that the pastor might step into and uh, you know begin to share um, those things so one has to be open to that one has to be open to that now we know that god's word will come in inspire us um uh, the prophetic will inspire us in our teaching the prophetic will inspire us to um you know have more revelation there can also be Here, just a moment I... uh, is there a question that somebody has Okay, not really. Yeah, uh, it could cause more revelation to come in. There can also be elements of, uh, you know, when when a pastor begins to flow in the prophetic uh, foretelling of the things that are to come, uh, the way intercession uh, happens, the way worship happens can completely be transformed, uh, and one may move into you know, um, confronting demonic powers because we know that the prophetic anointing does that. So uh, this also could happen. There can be unusual manifestations of God's power. There can be extraordinary signs, wonders. So a pastor needs to be open to these things. And uh, as the Lord is leading the pastor to uh, prepare the church to receive such things, you know, he, he needs to uh, work on that. And a pastor also needs to keep the emphasis on helping people remember that, uh, you know, it's all about God and not so much make the spiritual gifts a focus. Because um, if the pastor makes the gifts, the flow of the, sp flow of the gifts uh, prominent and just teaches the church that, hey, you know, we're all about spiritual gifts. We're all about, you know, only the power of God. Uh, what happens is, people will will um you know miss out those elements of worship intimacy with god and also uh, what i shared earlier about pursuing holiness so we we uh, inform them we teach them in a holistic way and that really would uh, help the church so don't emphasize so much on the method um and uh, the gifts as much as the purpose of those gifts okay so that way a pastor will be able to um, uh, himself flow in the gifts of the spirit and also uh, rightly instruct god's people to flow in the gifts of the spirit and then of course uh, a pastor can encourage the uh, coming together of prophetic teams we've touched on that in the last class we said there can be creative teams there can be evangelistic teams there can be worship teams so there can be many different teams that are um, uh, practicing the flow of the prophetic okay so uh, that is the way in which one can help a local church transition into becoming more prophetic so any uh, comments about this any thoughts about this uh, particular topic if there are, we'll take that up and then we will move into a practice session for today. Yes, yes, Louis. Please go ahead. Good morning, Ma. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I was just, I'm just trying to ask for clarity. Um, where, where do we have a balance between making a transition into, in this case, the prophetic and still maintain um, um, relationship with God? Because sometimes when the emphasis is on the prophetic, we tend to, you know, start to extract nutrients for that transition from God, from the world, from um from older, from older senior ministers. So where do we balance that place of personal relationship so that the emphasis does not change, does not move from our personal relationship into the F emphasis for the moment, in this case, transition into a prophetic um, or an apostolic church? Mm hmm 
Okay. Okay. Uh, how do we keep the balance? You're asking, uh, Louis. Yeah, ma, the balance. Mm -hmm. um, because I also talking from personal experience when there's an emphasis of the spirit, mm. and, and you are trying to extract all the juice. You know what I mean, juice, all the essence of the of the transition, all the emphasis of the transition, all the details of the transition. So sometimes we are asking God for the directions, the the vehicle He wants to use, the people He wants to use, and it sometimes can shift our attention away from. Um, our personal relationship at that time into the emphasis he's trying to make at the moment. So where do we keep the balance so that we do not lose focus of, um, it's like at that point we're trying to use God to achieve a transition and shifting our focus from the relationship we're building with him to the transition itself. So how do we keep the balance? Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Louis. Very good, uh, uh, important question. I want to take us back to a discussion that we had in the previous course, and this was about the house of God. Uh, over there, we, we learned, uh, Louis, that when it comes to equipping the church in the truth of God's word, as a pastor, we can be very intentional. Um, and therefore, the choice of topics you know, can be laid out in such a way that people have a good foundation on uh, the subjects of discipleship. Okay, So we might want to establish our people in Christian life, discipleship really well before we help them transition into um, uh, becoming a prophetic church. Because this is more you know, of, of a ministry sort of a uh, subject. So I don't know if you would recall, we said that there are three pillars. One is about, uh, you know, discipleship. One, uh, one pillar is about Christian ministry. The other one is about life skills. Now, all these three areas require emphasis from the pulpit. Otherwise, what happens, We if we just hold on to one subject uh, as you said you know we can go overboard not that it is wrong but it's just that the balance uh, that the people need uh, would would kind of you know be out so uh, the best way to do it is equip them in discipleship so then you know we are preparing them about the basics you know the word of god how can one pursue uh, their relationship with God through prayer? How can, you know, one spend time in worship? What does it mean to have, you know, a, a life as a disciple, sharing the gospel? So there are many different aspects, right? So we, we, we lay a good foundation of all of that. And then, you know, we, we help them move on to subjects such as the prophetic. So even after we share about the prophetic anointing, I think when we're teaching a subject, Louis, uh, it's good to uh, share it as wholly as we can, you know, based on the revelation that we have from God's word so far and, uh, you know, the clarity that the scriptures uh, give us. So even in what I shared just now, you know, I talked about some of the pitfalls, um, some of the dangers. So, uh, we can share it in that way and so when we share it in a in a, a complete way people will understand okay my identity is not that i am a prophetic person i am in christ and i'm also prophetic you know so then they are able to understand how to really carry this anointing and flow in the anointing so that will help um and in addition to that i think what we call as handholding or what we call as um, continual encouragement will also be beneficial because then what is happening is the pastor and the leadership team, um, let's say they are already equipped and they are experienced in these areas, they can also guide the people, you know, through this 
process so as and when people make mistakes or people have questions it is addressed and thereby uh, you know the the transition is quite okay and you know people will not go out of balance so just some practical things louis and i and i hope it answers your question yeah yeah yes ma thank you so much at least once the foundation oh. is laid everything upon it will was we get the with balance i understand ma thank you so much Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, I, I mean, I also know where you're coming from, but because uh, what happens sometimes is, see, it's a good thing for us to become a prophetic church and an apostolic church, but people get caught up only in that. So, uh, from the pulpit, it's only words uh, that are uh, you know called out and all that, but the teaching becomes less. You know, the equipping becomes less, and yes, always, yeah, yeah. and it's always about prophesying so then people might lose the balance yes ma'am you are correct ma'am it happens a lot in this side because they're not going to the extreme of yeah being yeah i get it yeah so and and the next generation the next generation catch up on that and the foundation is sometimes lost in the whole process so we try to keep a balance mm. i understand ma'am thank yes, you so much yes yes yeah sure 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 thank you and uh, also uh, thank uh, louis i just want to add to this so as you said you know the next generation only captures us um, being prophetic mm. also another thing that happens is uh, i think along with the prophetic you see it's very uh, thrilling when you when you see oh god knows there is all this revelation so when in a church we go out of balance what also happens is you know there is this appearance of we say thrills and frills kind of a ministry um so people wrongly feel understand that this is how the prophetic is you know it, the service has to be uh, you know very exciting it has to be you know you, you should get some goosebumps and only then god is moving in our midst but not necessarily you know we might give the wrong picture to our coming generations or the uh, you know the churches that don't yet flow in the prophetic that this is how the prophetic is supposed to be but not necessarily not necessarily no we can keep it very simple uh, we can be very simple and yet be very prophetic okay so the uh, order that we maintain in a church service you know all these things it it will really depend on us being very intentional and considering the word of god um holy and not only emphasizing on the prophetic because then and unfortunately it's happening it's happening in many places uh, but you know hopefully people will transition into making the manifestation you know of of the or, or the flow of the prophetic um, uh, undergirded by the entire truth of god's word and all of that and so you know, there can be a balance of teaching properly teaching the word god's word properly equipping believers in both discipleship and in ministry how do you minister with the gift of prophecy so then you will have um, you know believers who will really benefit the body of christ so yeah thank you and uh, yeah blue anything more you want to say no no thank you ma'am i just want to say thank you for understanding what i was coming thank you yeah so sure sure no problem thank you louis all right so that's uh, important uh, anything else uh, before we move forward okay all right so uh, in that case we will just take some time to pray over one another and um, uh, i mean ideally if we were in the class then we could have divided us into groups and uh, everyone will would have had an opportunity to pray and hear from god uh, but i'm thinking you know the way we will do it today is i'm looking at all your names listed here on google classroom what i will do is i will just assign each of you make you into two so i'll call out you know uh, two people's names and you can consider yourself a team and just pray for that 
know the wh whosoever name i i give you just pray and uh, just see if you're receiving anything in your spirit maybe it's a sense of something or you know you feel like um, you know you you saw a picture or you picked up a word in your spirit it can be anything just be open and no pressure if you feel like i'm not hearing anything it's okay it's totally fine but uh, pray for the other person and see if you get something from god for them Okay, so that's what we will do. We're doing this online, and I really hope you know it goes okay. So I'm just gonna randomly mix up all all the people here. Mm, uh, okay, so Prezi and Beth, Prezi and Beth, if you could please pray for each other. If you can just put a yes on the chat, then I know that you you heard what I'm saying. Ah, uh, yes, Christopher, you have a question. Yes, I was just thinking that uh, is it possible to um, you know form breakout groups um, so that uh, you know we can we can actually have uh, you know have them have us have each uh, I mean from, I mean we can have it broken into you know into smaller groups. Okay, understood, uh, Christopher. So, Christopher, Google Classroom as of now with the current settings that I have, uh, I okay. It just it does say breakout room. So let me give it a shot. If this works, then yes. Thank you for uh, mm, proposing it. So Beth and Prezi, please hold on. Let me let me see if I can set you all up into breakout rooms. Okay. So I'm going to do this. What we will do is we will have five breakout rooms. So this does give me uh, 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 an option to do that. So there will be five people in a group and you can all go into a group. We have uh, a good um, maybe 10 minutes. No, let me give you about six to six minutes. The breakout room will close on its, okay, it's 938. 938 okay seven minutes i'll give you seven minutes uh and you're all shuffled so just pray for one another and uh, see if you know there's anything that you want to share with them we'll come back and we we can talk about it so there are three rooms and i'm opening up five rooms so i'm opening it up you should get a prompt hopefully or just be divided into the groups yeah so the rooms are open you can leave please Yeah, so Prezi, Louis, Georgia, Isaac, if you can please pick a room, that would be good. Room three, anyone? Okay, Siddhant, all okay? Are you having difficulty? Louis, are you okay? Are you able to join? I think my network is a bit slow, but I'm going to join now. Okay, okay. It's a bit slow. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem, no problem.
Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. The rooms have closed. It feels like rapture. All of you left and all of you are back. So, uh, but uh, good though. Hopefully you had some time to uh, pray over one another. If anyone wants to share uh, from whatever happened in the breakout room, you could please share. Hi, Pastor. Yes, um, hi, hi, Tesha. Breakout room, the time really seems short. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, short because as you know it wasn't like one on one it was um five or so four or five individuals mm -hmm. you know we prayed first and um, i think that's about maybe three or so minutes and then you know um i saw harrison's wife that's what i saw her looking uh, she's looking up, she's expecting something right she's looking as if she's waiting looking up she's looking to god she's expecting something so I'd ask him, how is she? Um, and he said, she's in another country at the moment. She's probably traveling, right? And I asked her, ask him if she sings. And he says, yes. Because I also saw something of her singing, but um, it was just brief. And um, she, he said she's expect, looking for a job right now. So pretty much um, I, we pray, I prayed for her. And pray that um, you know she gets hope and every doubt be removed. And so pretty much, and prayed for Arison, and that was about it for our time. I don't think anybody has got to share it with us. Okay, thank okay, yeah. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Tasha. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. And Rose noted. Uh, what we'll do is, I think next class there's only two more chapters. Two, yeah, like uh, two more chapters left. I'll just share the key points in about fifteen minutes. And the entire time we'll we'll uh, break ourselves up into groups and do uh, you know practice. So hopefully that will help. Mm, yeah, say you have something to share. Yes, I, well, I also had the same situation. The time was short, and uh, but I was in a group with um, Parak Paraka and um, Shivron, and um, while he prayed, first of all, I kept seeing like a tire rolling then it was like the picture was opening up more and more and it was like a bite but if the focus was more on the tire rolling I, I don't know what that meant and then when Shimron prayed um what I kept hearing in my spirit was light 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 so before I could pray for pray for them because we all agreed that we'll pray take turn but I couldn't pray for any of them. But that was what I saw while each of them prayed. Or what I heard and what I saw. When they prayed. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you, Say. So you you didn't have a chance to tell them this? Um, it was very short. So I just mentioned it, but I couldn't really um, okay. talk about it more. Yeah. Okay, so what we can do is, uh, you know, we are closing this uh, call in one minute, but we have the stream page. Okay, where you can go and post so you can say you know for um, you know for taisha and if you did see something and uh, you know if, if you can interpret it even better you can just post it out there uh, just make sure that it's not a personal message uh, if it is a personal message then you know we'll see how you can share that with them but if it is something general then you can post it on the stream page okay so let's do that for now and uh, in the next class uh, we will take you know the the larger proportion of the session only for prayer okay fine class is that okay yeah i guess fine. it's fine That's yeah fine. so okay great uh, uh then say can you please pray we'll uh, wrap up this class that's great our father in heaven we bless you and we worship you we give you glory thank you lord for this time we have spent, Lord, learning at your feet. Thank you, Lord, for our instructor, how you have guided her, and the wisdom through it, Lord, you have impacted upon us through her, strengthen her, increase her on all sides. Increase, oh God, your wisdom more and more, and Lord, equip her more and more, Lord, for greater works. We pray, Father, for each and every one of us that our time will never be wasted, for Lord, all that you have equipped us and taught us, Lord, will be utilized for the glory 
of you and lord for the extension of your kingdom lord we pray that as we continually um flow in the prophetic we pray that each day we will perfect the gift of prophecy and we pray that lord we will never elevate prophecy above you will always point everyone to you jesus that our victim will always point back to you and that all we do all that we prophesy all that we see all that we hear it will all back come back to you jesus at all times blessed be your holy name as we go go with us you know on other classes give us wisdom lord to understand all that we are taught to your glory of your name in jesus name amen Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Christopher. Learned something new today. <laughs> I didn't know Google Classroom can do this. Yeah. So God bless. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rupa. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you, Papakar.